Where'd you get these? <laughs> Why is this man in such a good mood? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it might be because Don Wilson's band, The Ventures, is getting some respect. Finally. We're kind of like the Rodney Dangerfields of the rock world. You know, we just, we just don't get no respect. <laughs> What? No respect for a band that's recorded 250 albums? Sold over 100 million? Invented surf music? Charted smash hits like Walk Don't Run and the Hawaii Five-0 theme? Must I go on? The Ventures created a universal instrumental institution, and when they do a hit, you know it's been done. The Ventures are the number one instrumental group in recorded music history. Let's go back to the beginning. Tacoma, 1959. Don Wilson and Bob Bogle decide to quit bricklaying and form a band. We decided, uh, well, let's go buy a couple of guitars and we'll buy some chord books and try to <laughs> uh, see what we can do with them and, and just have fun with it. So anyway, my partner had a an album called Hi-Fi and Focus by Chet Atkins, and he had a song on there called Walk Don't Run. We just loved it, but he played it in a classical jazzy style, and so we couldn't do that, so we eventually put it into what style we could put it into, you know, more like venture style. <laughs> Don and Bob can't find a record company that'll sign them. So Don's mom, Josie Wilson, with $100 and no experience, starts her own label. She produces the single, Walk Don't Run, and has 300 copies pressed. We were working all the time, and my mom really had uh, thought we were really good, and we were gonna go somewhere. She was so positive. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure the Ventures would be where they are today, or even get started without my mom's help. She's able to get legendary KJR disc jockey Pat O'Day to give the record a spin. We always had the news at 55 minutes at each hour and we had to hit it right to the minute and there would be a little gap. Uh, time to occasionally use an instrumental to fill in. So I took this song that had just come out of a recording studio in West Seattle uh, that I loved it from the first time I heard it and would put it on the air each hour to fill in that gap. Soon the phone was ringing. Soon uh, they have the courage to release that record and soon the Ventures Walk Don't Run is number two in the nation. Walk Don't Run launches the Ventures and a million guitar bands. It's the first of many two-minute masterpieces with Don on rhythm guitar, Bob Bogle on bass, Mel Taylor on drums, and Noki Edwards on lead guitar, the Ventures head to LA. The rest is underrated rock history. In 1963, the Ventures have five albums simultaneously in Billboard's Top 100. Six singles made the Top 40. But the heck with the music, check out those album covers. They just seem to like to put uh, beautiful women on our covers. <laughs> maybe that explains you, 110 million now, Maybe that's why sold. this one didn't sell ah. that much. Uh, no, I don't know. What goes up, the charts, must eventually come down. The Ventures' popularity waned here in the 70s, but not in Japan, where they've been superstars from the beginning. When the Beatles came out, we outsold them, not just outsold them, but two to one in the first two years in Japan. A lot of people just don't know that. Japan has pretty much kept the band in business since then. In fact, the Ventures recently finished their 45th sold-out tour there. And I say it's kind of like Vegas, what, uh, what happens in Japan stays in Japan, unfortunately. Here's Telstar and the Lonely Bull, have a gold record on that. The walls of Don Wilson's home in Sammamish are filled with mementos that speak to the venture's stellar accomplishments. This is just a, a, the tip of the iceberg here. I could fill every wall in this house from what I have in my storeroom. But something is missing. The induction of the ventures into Cleveland's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Despite being eligible for 22 years, they still haven't made the cut. See, no respect. 
The new B97.3. Hi, it's Mark Christopher. I'm Mark Christopher of Oldie there. Station B97.3 ran, not walked, for help. So we did the famous Ventures nomination kickoff beach party in the spring of 2005 here in Seattle. My goal was we really got to make it a circus. So we trucked in sand, we brought in driftwood, we brought in, uh, there was a guy that came up from Westport with surfboards, and it was just a wonderful experience, and I got the firepower I needed just to get the motivation and get the excitement as a kickoff for a nomination campaign. Eventually, 10,000 signatures are gathered for a petition to the Hall of Fame. And first on the list is Josie Wilson, who greets fans at the event a month before her 90th birthday. And I told her, Josie, no guarantee, but I think I can figure this thing out and get your son and the band in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mark delivers on that promise, which brings us back to Don Wilson, happily packing his bags for New York and the induction of the Ventures into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I'm on my way. Here is probably the biggest instrumental record of the day, a thing called Walk, Don't Run. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the Ventures. This is long overdue, and guys like me sure appreciate this. It is my honor to induct the Ventures into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is the Ventures night. Well, there was that material girl, too. Who would have thought that after recording Walk, Don't Run 48 years ago, we would be going through this honor tonight? Yeah. <laughs> but the belated and hard-earned party is bittersweet. Three of those at Don's side from the beginning aren't there to share in the celebration. Bob Bogle is too ill to attend. Drummer Mel Taylor died in 1996, and Don's mom, Josie, passed away in 2007. Uh, also, my mom, Josie Wilson, who was a big part of our... Oh, thank you. Yeah. Who was a big part of our, our early success. If she could have lived just one more year, she would have seen this, and it's a shame, too. Anyway, uh, I'm sure she's here in spirit. The Ventures celebrate their 50th anniversary in 2009, and they're still recording and touring. Dawn is 75 and recently moved back to the Northwest after 35 years in L.A. Thanks to the Hall of Fame, the Ventures have finally gotten the respect Dawn has longed for. You know, they're the number one instrumental group in recorded music history. So come on, give them some respect. happy about it. I'm, I'm satisfied we're finally in. I don't like the word posthumously, so it's, a, it's good timing actually, and I'm not sure that it isn't better that it happened now than it did 22 years ago. It would have been forgotten about by now. The Ventures!